We're back with uh, Ash Limited, and now we're going to talk about capital gearing, or gearing, or sometimes called uh, leverage or leverage. And capital gearing refers to the structure of the company's capital employed. It refers to the composition of the company's medium and long-term finance. We can see that Ash Limited's capital employed is €880,000. Capital gearing so refers to the composition of a firm's capital employed. It measures how much of capital employed comes from debt capital or fixed return capital. Let's have a closer look at Ash Limited's capital employed. And we see that they've got €880,000 in capital employed, of which the 300,000 coming from the debentures and the 150,000 euro coming from preferring shares would be classed as fixed return capital. Of course, strictly speaking, the 150,000 coming from the preferring shareholders wouldn't really be called debt capital. So of the 880,000 euro, 450,000 of that is coming from fixed return capital and that gives us an answer of 0.51 or if you like you can say 51% more than half 51% of Ash Limited's capital employed is coming from fixed return capital and as it's over 50% this is classified as high capital gearing now it's probably closer to neutral capital gearing but in leaving Sir for to say anything over 50% is high gearing and anything under 50% is low gearing. So again, 51% of Ash Limited's capital employed comes from fixed return capital. Last year it was, as you'll see if you check the question, last year it was 45% or 0.45, so that's looked on as an unfavourable trend. A higher proportion of the company's capital employed is coming from fixed return capital. And that can put the company under certain pressures. A bigger proportion of their finance is coming from fixed return capital. So they're at greater risk from what you'd call outsiders. We owe the banks of the debenture orders 300,000. They're not the owners of the company. Neither are the preferring shareholders. Although the preference share capital is long term, the preference share owners aren't the owners of the company. The owners are the ordinary shareholders. And the other pressure, of course, comes from what's referred to as times interest earned, or it could be called times interest covered. This measures the ability of the company's profits to cover the fixed return. As we know already, the firm's net profit is 50,000. The net profit before interest was 80,000. So, the times interest earned, or times interest covered is net profit plus interest over interest. And that gives us uh, 2.66 recurring. And you write that as 2.67 times. So the profit before interest is 2 and 2 thirds times the actual interest. Last year's trigger was 8 times. So that, that's a much worsening trend. We would say that this, we would say that Ash Limited is under more threat from outside investors. And that could result in problems for the company's ability to pay their uh, dividends for ordinary shareholders in the future. Finally, you'll notice that although the gearing ratio includes the calculation of the preference shares, because they're fixed to term, preference dividend isn't included in the times interest earned formula, because when it comes down to it, Preference dividend need not be paid.
if it's an appropriation of profits, whereas interest has to be charged. So we include interest in this form and below the length and not the preference dividends. 